Okay, everybody, welcome to chapter five of To Kill a Mockingbird. These are your notes and a short little directive, I guess, for the dialectical journal that you're going to do tonight. Some important terms that you need to know, and you should write these down or screenshot them or have them in some safe place. And I know we've gone over these before, but I want you to specifically be able to point to them when you see them in the text. And chapter five is a great example of Harper Lee's use of characterization. She uses both indirect and direct to develop specifically Atticus and Miss Maudie. We see a lot of their characteristics kind of coming through the way other characters look at them, the actions that they perform, and also the way that Scout explicitly describes the characters. Now, Atticus, as the father, as the wise, kind of admired character um, in this portion is very strongly characterized. And we see how others view him, specifically Miss Maudie. Um, we can tell that she does respect him. She says, after all, that he is the same in his house as he is on public streets. So there's this sense of Atticus practicing what he preaches. He is not hiding anything. He behaves in a way that is not hypocritical. She obviously knows him very well, as most of the townspeople do. And in the end of the chapter, we also see how Atticus is kind of guiding Scout and Jem to respect the privacy of others and to help them understand the perspective of others. So we know in previous chapters he has said you never really know what a person is going through until you see it from their point of view. And this definitely comes into play in chapter 5 when Atticus reprimands the children for their actions. Another thing that's important, and again we see motif in this little portion here, is the motif of secrets and hypocrisy. So now, hypocrisy is this uh, pretending to have good morals or be religious or be high and mighty about something or have an opinion that sharply contrasts what you actually practice and what you actually do. So it seems as though a lot of people in the town behave in one way out in public, and then secretly are another way. So um, Lee kind of develops this through Miss Maudie's discussion of Atticus being the same on the public streets as he is at home, okay? We know that Atticus is not actually a hypocrite. He has good morals, he practices them no matter where he goes, but there are some people in the story that don't have as good morals as he does. They only pretend to. And you'll frequently see mentions of Miss Stephanie being the neighborhood scold or neighborhood gossip. So she gossips a lot but makes herself out to be this high and mighty character when in reality she is pretty undesirable. In Chapter 5, we get a real good sense of Miss Maudie, who is their neighbor, um, Scout really enjoys her company, and they have good conversations that are kind of born out of Jem's rejection of Scout at this point. So um, Dill and and uh, Jem seem to play together a lot, which leaves Scout feeling kind of left out. And so she seeks out Miss Maudie's friendship. And just like... Atticus, Miss Maudie is very, very protective of Arthur, or Boo, Radley. She kind of puts off Scout's questions about him, all right, um, that 
he's still alive. He's, he's fine. Um, she brushes off Scout's worries that Arthur is a bad person. Okay? So she says he just stays in his house, that's all. When you stay in, in the house if you didn't want to come out? And Scout is still confused about this. But she's trying to really understand what privacy is. She's too young to fully understand that, that concept. And um, the fact that everybody else in the town is very, very social and Arthur Boo Radley is not um, bothers her. But Miss Marty doesn't kind of, I guess, take the bait. She's not a gossip like Miss Stephanie. She is not going to um, kind of give in to Scout's little um, fantasies and stories about Boo. Miss Marty also um, tells us a lot about what she thinks about religion. Um, this is an important little part because... You know, Harper Lee doesn't just communicate her beliefs through Scout's narration like she did with the schooling, how um, Makeham's schooling was a treadmill. You know, that's how Lee felt about schooling at that time. Um, she also talks about this these foot-washing Baptists, and essentially she is referring to Anybody who is too fundamental in their belief system, okay? So any kind of religion is a good thing, basically, she's saying, but if it is too much of um, the focus or too fundamental, taking the Bible literally, it's not going to be a good thing. It's a poisonous thing, okay? And so that's how Miss Maudie kind of sees that um, the Radley family. And we also see Scout refer to her as a reasonable creature, okay? How, um, how so reasonable a creature could live in peril of everlasting torment was incomprehensible. So she doesn't understand how anybody could believe that Somebody like Miss Maudie would go to hell for having a nice garden. All right. And so Miss Maudie and Atticus are two very strong, um, positive role models for um, Scout and Jem. All right. And here's this part that talks about Atticus um, being a, a good man in public versus in, in private uh, being the same in both places. We also get Maudie's interpretation of um, what's going on in the Radley's house, that it is a sad house. There is some kind of secret in there. Um, and again, that just continues with that motif of secrets and hypocrisy among people. Okay? So, for Chapter 5, I want you to focus on characterization. It's really important that you look for both direct and indirect. I want you to specifically choose a section that demonstrates direct or indirect characterization of Miss Maudie or Atticus. And remember that your dialectical journals should be, quote, on one side... And then on the other side, your response. And in your response, I want to make sure that you understand it needs to not just be a translation of what's happening in the story, but how this impacts the entire structure or our ideas that um, Harper Lee is trying to communicate to us. So really look into all the aspects of characterization, how characterization supports that ongoing motif of secrets and hypocrisy, how it supports the motif of blindness even, um, 
how characterization can um, be used to communicate Harper Lee's tone on certain subjects. All of those are important aspects of looking at characterization. It's not just about creating a picture in your mind of this person, but rather the characters play a larger role in the book at large. So, I hope you enjoy your reading tonight, and make sure that you're putting your dialectical journals in a safe place and saving them up. This is dialectical journal number two in your list. And when we get to five, I will collect them all. Have a nice evening, and I will see you tomorrow.